Hello there. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to take a set of activities and create a Gantt chart as well as an activity on Node project network. This problem corresponds to exercises 3.8 and 3.9 in your textbook. So the data for our problem has the city of Lethbridge deciding to build a garden and picnic area. And we're provided with a precedence table for other activities to construct. And our requirement will be to draw the Gantt chart for the whole construction activity. So we have planning, that's the first activity. But then we have purchasing, that is preceded by planning, which would be A. Excavation is activity C, which is also preceded by planning. Sawing, activity D, is preceded by purchasing, so that's activity B. Placement is preceded by both sawing and excavation, so both C and D. Assembly comes after placement, which is E. Activity G infill comes after assembly, which is F. Outfill also comes after assembly, which is F. And decoration must come after both infill and outfill, so that is G and H. So let's now proceed with drawing the Gantt chart for this project. Okay, let's start with this Gantt chart. Now one of the easiest ways to do this fairly quickly and simply is using Excel. So what I've done is I've pre-created a table that includes all the activities from planning through to decoration, labeled A through I, and then uh, use my column widths to set the cell widths to be smaller. That way, instead of having very wide cells, you can have square-shaped cells. What I also did is I set the scale for time, which in this question is in hours, for each single block to represent 10 hours. So we'll start with activity A, planning. And you can see that activity A takes 20 hours to complete, so that would be two blocks. We'll select two blocks and we'll highlight a green. Then purchasing comes after planning, so that means purchasing is gonna start here and it takes 60 hours, so that's going to be six blocks. I'm also gonna note here that planning ends after 20 hours, and then purchasing will add another 60 hours to the total time, leaving us at 80. Activity C is excavation and it comes after planning, which is activity A. So excavation would start here, and it takes 100 hours, so that's going to be 10 blocks. And 20 plus 100 is 120. The next activity is sawing, which happens after purchasing, so we'll start here at 80 hours, and takes 30 hours to complete, so that's three blocks. That will put us at 110 hours. Placement takes place after both sawing and excavation, which is C and D, but because C takes the longest, placement cannot start until the 120 hour mark. It takes 20 hours, so two blocks, which puts us now at 140 hours. Activity F for assembly takes place after placement, so that means it starts at 140, takes one a time block for 10 hours, which would put it at the end of 150 hours. Activity G is infill, it takes place after assembly, so it will begin at the 150 hour mark and take 20 hours to complete, so that puts us at 170 hours. Activity H, outfill, also happens after assembly. It takes 10 hours, so that would put us at 160 hours. And then the last activity, decoration, takes place after infill and outfill, but infill is the longest predecessor, so decoration cannot start until infill is complete, and it takes 30 hours or three blocks, and that brings us to 200 hours. So what this Gantt chart shows us is that all the activities sequenced properly will take 200 hours. What we can also do with the Gantt chart is use it to identify the critical path. So we'll start with A, because that's the first one that's always on the critical path, and we'll highlight that one yellow. Then we look for the next longest activity, and we can see that that's activity C, or excavation. And then what immediately succeeds excavation is placement, followed by assembly, then infill, and then decoration. So now we've determined that the critical path is A, C, E, F, G, I, for a total of 200 hours. And there you have it. That's the Gantt chart for this question. Okay, so now I've gone and placed our completed Gantt chart into our question space here. And our next requirement, which refers to question 3.9 and is based on the table in 3.8, we want to draw the activity on node network for the construction activity. So what I've done in advance is created some activity nodes for A through I along with their times. Now let's go ahead 
and let's draw the A1 map. We know we start with activity A, and then activity B comes immediately after activity A, and activity C also comes after activity A. So we can put it about there. And if we want, we can make A kind of centered with those. There's no right or wrong way to draw these diagrams, just whatever looks the best. Activity D comes after activity B. Activity E comes after activity C, so we can put that over here. Activity F or comes after activity E. Activity G comes after activity F. And activity H also comes after activity F. And then finally activity I comes after both G and H. And let's now draw our lines. And there's our finished A1 diagram. Because we have a single start node and end node for A and I, we don't need to have dummy nodes. And now let's identify all of the paths. So our first path can be A, B, D, E, F, G, and I. And when you add all those up together, that will work out to 190 hours. Our next path, let's do in green, will be A, B, D, E, F, H, and I. And that will take 180 hours. Our next path can be A, C, E, F, G, and I. That one will take 200 hours. And then our last path will be A, C, E, F, H, I. And that takes, when you add all the times up, 190 hours. Well, as you can see, that the critical path is the longest at 200 hours, which is A, C, E, F, G, I. But that's also what we identified as the critical path over here using the Gantt chart. So what you can see is that using both a Gantt chart or an AON diagram, you can identify what the critical path is. The AON diagram, however, is a little bit easier to identify all the paths than a Gantt chart is. And so there you have it. There's the answer to this problem, showing you how to draw a Gantt chart and an AON diagram and using both to identify the critical path.